All right, so when we're talking about Terraform and Knits, now this is going to be the first command that you're going to run after you write your configuration. And Terraform and Knit is going to initialize your working directory, and it's going to download all the providers and modules that you need locally on your machine so Terraform can run. So let's take a look to see what happens when you use Terraform and Knit. So first of all, we're going to look at our working directory. Right? This is going to be the directory that you're going to use on your machine. Now, this is where your Terraform configuration is going to live. So here we have our working directory. Now, this is at the root of your working directory, so it doesn't really matter where it is on your machine. I keep mine under GitHub or GitLab, depending on where I'm working at, but where, put it where it makes sense for you. Put it where it makes sense on your machine. Now, underneath of our working directory is where we're going to have all of our stuff built out. Now, what's going to happen, though, is when we run Terraform init, it needs to go grab those providers and those modules from somewhere. And that somewhere is likely GitHub. So let's go over here and take a look. So on GitHub, we draw this out. Now, GitHub is where we're going to store many of our configurations, our providers, and all that kind of stuff. And anytime these are updated, then they get pushed to GitHub, and we have a new provider. We have a new version of a module. Now, out in GitHub, we may have our provider. So let's look at this. So we may have our AWS provider out here on GitHub. We may have our Azure provider. All right. We may have our GCP provider. And we have all of our other providers that are generally stored on GitHub, VMware, anything else you can think of that you're going to use for your Terraform. Now, on top of our providers, we also have our modules that are stored in GitHub as well. And our modules may include things like a network module. We may have something like a subnet module. I'll just put an S for subnet here. We may have things like a module to stand up EKS, right, a Kubernetes cluster. Now, all these modules get stored out on GitHub, but in order to use Terraform, what well, we need a copy of these providers and of these modules if we're using them on our local machine. And that's what Terraform init does for us. All right, so when we run Terraform init, what's going to happen is it's going to create a new directory underneath of our working directory. And this new directory is going to be called .terraform. All right, so we have our Terraform directory. Now, underneath of that directory, it's going to create a providers directory. All right, we have our providers directory. It's also going to create a directory to store our modules. All right. So we have two directories that are created. Now, if you are only using providers, you don't have any modules in your configuration, you won't see the modules directory. And in fact, you probably won't see the providers directory because Terraform is going to put the providers directly underneath of the .terraform configuration, all right, in this directory. So what's going to happen is when you run a Terraform init, What's going to happen is it's going to create this .terraform. It's going to create this directory for providers, create this directory for modules. And what it's going to do is it's going to grab these providers or grab these modules that live out on GitHub, and it's going to download them and make a copy locally. So say, for example, we're using the AWS provider here. So underneath the providers, you would see a new directory called AWS. You also may see one called, I don't know, maybe you're using the random provider here, all right? So it's going to download a copy of these providers locally. Now, same thing for modules over here. If you're going to deploy a network and then an EKS cluster, well, it needs to download those as well. So underneath of this, you'll see your network module, and then you'll also see your EKS module as well. Now, a copy of these are all downloaded directly onto your machine, all right? And this is a specific version of this EKS module. So say, for example, if this module was 1.8, right? We would download 1.8 
over here. We keep module number 1.8 on our machine. Meanwhile, this may increment to 1.9, 2.0, etc. And if we want to update, again, we would run terraform init dash upgrade command. And that allows us to say, Terraform, I need you to go get the latest version of my module or my provider on my local machine because I've updated my configuration and now I want to take advantage of the, the new features or get rid of a bug that may exist in either provider or a module, all right? So that's primarily what Terraform Init is going to do for you. It's gonna go ahead and create this directory for you. It's gonna prep your machine in order to run future Terraform commands. Now those commands may include Terraform plan, apply, destroy, and others, but essentially Terraform Init is gonna prepare your working directory and your backend to run future Terraform commands. And those are the commands that we're gonna learn about next.